Hold on. Oh, I, I think I see it. This is a least bitter, very small bird in the great blue heron family, or the, the heron family, I should say, and uh, but much, much smaller, smallest, the smallest of the heron family that we ever see. I don't know if there's anything smaller or not, but. Okay, we've got to move just a bit. Um, hopefully we can find it again. Again, we're looking at a least bittern. We haven't seen one ourselves together uh, in a few years. We, we once had a good look at a juvenile. This appears to be an adult. Uh, it's my understanding that a least bittern uh, can actually hunt in deeper water than can an American bittern, which is a much larger bird. And the reason why is because they're able to make use of like, of reeds and things like that uh, to, uh, you know, they'll, they'll sometimes uh, hold on to two reeds or one reed and be right above uh, deeper water than, let's say, an American bittern could use. I don't know if American bitterns typically use, actually, uh, reeds or not. So if you're wondering, you know, why is it that these last few weeks we've been creeping through this area here? Well, this is one of the reasons why. Um, an American bittern or a least bittern, two different species, you know, they can both be very difficult to find, but we've, we saw actually, was it a couple weeks ago? We saw an American bittern here in the area, but only briefly, then it, it, um, it flew out of view. And this is a least bittern, and now it is out of view, although I suspect it's still right there. trying to determine if I were to move, would we be able to see it better? Maybe. But I don't know if I'd find it again. That's the problem. Oh, 
Okay, um, I think we are going to move. Again, we're looking at a least, a least bitter. Truly a pleasure to see. Let's, uh, we're going to stay here for a moment or two and see if it comes back out. Seems larger than I would have expected. No, I think it's a No, that might be another least bitter. Yeah, I think it is. Um, or maybe the same least bitter, and I don't know. But that's a least bitter, I believe. It's too. It seems too small to be a, an American bittern. So never mind on American bittern. Well, you know what? I don't know. I do see a young uh, common gallinule as well. Oh, sorry. So I don't know if this could be the same bird as before or not. Uh, it might be. One second. Let's try to move some vegetation out of the way.
I don't, I don't believe, if I move forward, I don't believe that's going to help us. We've got too much vegetation that would be interfering with our view. So for a second I thought this was an American bittern, but I don't believe it is. I believe it's a, a least bittern. Somehow it seemed larger than it, but looking at it now uh, with the naked eye, Wouldn't mind if it came over this way a bit. Uh, as I said, we've got vegetation that's interfering, and um, and again, I don't know if this is a second least bittern or if it's the same one. Just looking around, and I see it's moved a bit. really a treat to see it. We won't stay on it all day, but we'll, uh, it's nice to watch it. And I'm just wondering if... Uh, if moving would help. Let's, uh, let's move just a bit. doesn't help either. Well, oh, it's moving.
I'm not sure I can see it with the naked eye. It just blends in and it's small. And I, I realize some some of you may grow bored with this, but I enjoy it. And again, we don't see leaf bitterns often, so uh, to be able to look at one is, a, as far as I'm concerned, a treat. And we're taking advantage of this sighting. I think I do see it with the naked eye, but not well. Um, I, if I were driving by, I would easily, I could easily miss it. look around with binoculars while you're looking. I'm not sure if the microphone is picking up the vocalizations that I'm hearing, but they're, um, they're red-winged blackbirds. We'll, we'll move on uh, shortly, but... Again, if you're just tuning in, we are looking at a least bittern. It's a species of bird we've only seen, uh, you know, a couple times before together on the tour. Very small member of the of the of the heron family. I mean, you might have thought the the green heron was was small, and it is, but this is even smaller. And it's uh, pretty much out in the open right now. There are some. Obviously, there's some lily pads around it, but you know what? If those lily pads weren't there, it probably wouldn't be there. Uh, it wouldn't be able to stand on nothing. There's got to be something for it to stand on. So, yes, we're taking a good long look, but, you know, I, we get so few looks at this species that I'm uh, making the most of it. Okay, now 
All right, we have a little bit of interference with uh, some vegetation here. And there's a bald eagle up above. We'll move on sh uh, shortly. Where are you? Where are you? 